Ready to learn how to complete a grid note? Let's get started. Click on the Notes desktop on the left hand side of the screen. You will be presented with a list of notes that you have created. To add a new note to the system, click Add Note. It may be helpful to maximize the note to full screen. Select your client. Your security settings will determine the clients displayed in the drop-down list. You may only see clients that have been assigned to you as opposed to all of the clients your agency serves. You can verify this setting by going to the Options menu to see if the Assigned Clients box is checked. If this box is checked and you do not see the client name for which you need to write a note for, be sure to contact your supervisor. If you are using the system to schedule your services, then you should be creating your notes from the scheduled events. Doing so will ensure that the units flow correctly in the system and can accurately be counted. It is important to understand that your unit count will be very inflated if you have scheduled events that are not pulled into the notes. To create your note from the schedule, move to the Schedule drop-down field. Select the record that matches the service and date of the note to be created. Once the scheduled record is selected, confirm that all populated fields are correct. Editing where necessary if applicable. Based on your company settings, you may or may not be able to change any of the fields that pull in from the schedule. After confirming all fields are correct, hit the Save button and your goals will populate below. We will get to the steps for addressing the goals in just a minute. If your services are not being scheduled in the program, then skip over the Schedule field and select the service date by using the calendar icon. Next, select the authorized service that was provided. Each service is associated with an end date of the authorization. Selecting the correct service provided is critical so that the corresponding goals for that service are displayed on the note. After the service is selected, notice the service unit utilization graph. Hover your mouse over any color in the graph to see the corresponding unit count. In process unit reflects all units that are tied up in the system but not yet billed. The template field should auto populate to GridNote based on your service selection. If GridNote is not auto populated, open the drop down and be sure to select that option. This template will pull in the goals, intervention keys, and assessment keys needed for the proper grid format. Enter in start time and end time or the duration of the service. It is one or the other based on how your company intends to capture time per service. Be sure to include AMs and PMs with your time. As a tip, just hit A for AM and P for PM. Your name will auto populate in the caregiver field. There should be no reason to change this as you are the caregiver who is documenting this service note. The supervisor name will also auto-populate. You can change the supervisor name if need be when who has auto-populated is not the actual supervisor responsible for reading and approving your note. Hit Save after all fields are entered. You will then see your goals for the client and service listed below. Begin documenting how the goals were worked by marking the appropriate intervention key that was provided. Your agency will determine how your intervention keys are set up. You may enter in either a number between 0 and 99 or either of the letters X and Y under any of the intervention key columns. You will then need to make an entry in the assessment section. The same values are valid so you can enter in any number between 0 and 99 or either of the letters X and Y. Because the intervention and assessment keys can be set up differently for each agency and for each service, be sure to understand from your supervisor what your keys mean so that you can document against your goals correctly. 
You also have a comment section to be able to enter in any comments related to that goal for that day. As you complete each goal, you will see the grid lines change from yellow to white. This visual cue allows you to understand which goals have been completed and which ones have not. Yellow indicates that the goal has not been addressed and white indicates that the goal has been. The goal is considered to be complete once an entry has been made into both the intervention and assessment sections. You will not be able to sign the note until all goals are met. You will also see, as you move through each goal, a shadowed line above your goal line that displays the previous entries. The previous entries are the entries made by any staff that provided the service directly prior to the service being documented. This is to help you understand how the goal was last worked so that you can make your best determination on assessing progress. Your agency may put a rule in place for some of your keys so that when marking against that key, you are required to also enter in a comment. For example, if I mark in the NA column and try to save my note, I am not allowed to save until I enter in a comment. Other than that scenario, you may save your work at any time. Even if you have not completed all of the goals, you can save what you have completed and continue addressing all the goals at a later time. To do so, hit Save and close the note. When you want to continue working on the note, find your note in the list and hit the Edit Note icon. When you have finished addressing all of the goals and feel you have completed your documentation of the service delivery, your last step will be to sign the note. You will be required to key in your password when signing the note to authenticate your signature. This is the same password that you use to log into the program. You may also receive warning messages if there is anything systematically out of compliance with the note. The system will check to make sure that the following are in place. That the caregiver certifications are up to date and not incomplete or expired that the client's consents are up to date and not incomplete or expired, that there are enough units left on the service authorization for this note, that the time on the note does not overlap with another note, and that all required fields have been entered. You will have the choice to click Yes, Continue Processing, or No, Cancel. By clicking Yes, you will proceed with signing your note and your supervisor will then review for approval. The supervisor will also receive the same warning messages and may determine at that time that the note cannot be approved for billing or for payroll. If you click No, Cancel, the note will not be signed and therefore will not be eligible for the supervisor to approve. Please review with your supervisor how you should handle these warning messages. You may reference your workflow chart to understand the status of your note as it moves through the life cycle in the program. This will help you understand if it has been approved for billing, approved for payroll, and whether or not it's been billed. You will find several tabs within each note. The Task tab is used for internal communication between the supervisor and the caregiver on the note. Typically, this is used when the supervisor cannot approve the note and needs to provide the caregiver with the needed corrections. The caregiver can then respond to the task and alert the supervisor when the task has been completed. You can learn more about the workflow of tasks in the tasks video. The history tab provides an audit trail with a timestamp of all actions taken every time the save button is clicked. The DMS tab stores the electronic record of the note. Every time a note is signed and or unsigned, a new electronic record is created. You can view the electronic record by clicking on the green arrow. This is how the hard copy version of the grid note will look. And that completes this video on how to complete a grid note. Please be sure to watch the related videos in the GridNote series to learn more.
Thanks.